Hi, and welcome to Three Questions with my buddy Jay Small with us. Hey, Jay, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, Kevin? I live in the dream, no matter what, brother. No other options and stuff. So, so awesome. Jay, for as a technology company, how's everything going on impacting you? Yeah, so it's definitely been crazy times. I think these are unprecedented times for everybody. Um, luckily, with the all of our clients, we've set up business continuity plans in the background so that when something like this happens, we can come out there and, and transition them to that continuity, you know, work from home plan that we've already kind of set up for them. Our company itself um, is set up so everybody can work remotely. So that's nice. We've kind of just shown our clients how to operate the way that we operate when possible, right? You know, some people are out there trying to do construction physically can't do it right now. Um, but with all of our clients that, you know, had capabilities to, we set them up so that they can work remotely. It's been kind of record um, levels of service calls with people calling in, never having connected, you know, to their server from their house before because they've never needed to. But now we're walking them through that process, taking care of it um, and, and really handling all that for them. So it's been, uh, you know, really unprecedented, really uncharted times, but you know, we're good, we're fully functioning. So therefore we can kind of be there for all of our clients that need us. And then, um, believe it or not, we've even had some calls from other companies that, you know, we've met with in the past. It wasn't good timing, but now that they're realizing, Hey, we need more support, uh, than what we have with our current setup. Um, we're actually getting those calls too for new business. So, um, we're, we're lucky that we can still be able to deliver to our clients right now and that, you know, we're in one of those industries that really is in high demand right now. Yeah, no, it's, it's funny because I was thinking of you this morning as we were getting ready to see what's coming on the show today and thinking back to my days in corporate being the IT guy and you know, hey, you know, have you ever tested your disaster recovery plan? Well, guess what? You've tested it pretty strongly right about now because yeah. I can't imagine what how much worse things could be short of the building blowing over in a tornado than it is right now. Right. I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's it's one of those things where people haven't been thrown in a situation like this before where you're forced to work from home. You know, there's, it's always a nice to have, you know, when you're talking with a company, hey, do you guys want to be able to work from home? But it says, you know what? Yeah, you know, we'd like to be able to do that, but it's not really a top priority right now. So we're not really focusing on it. Well, now it became a top priority for just about everybody out there. So, But the challenge, Jay, is how do you do it safely? You know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good thing to think about, Kevin, because a lot of people aren't even really thinking about the security aspect um, of, you know, what it entails to connect from home. So the biggest thing, um, and we actually, I can send you a link to a blog post that we actually recently did about this um, last week when a lot of these orders started to take effect. Um, but there's, there's a lot of things that you should be thinking about. So for one, making sure that you're using a company issued computer is an important thing. Um, I think that where people fall into traps a lot is that they just start working from their home computer. And now they're accessing company emails on their home computer. If their company information's in the cloud, like if they're using Dropbox or Box or SharePoint, now they're accessing that from their home computer. But their home computer doesn't necessarily have all the security measures that their company computer has. So things like making sure that you're running updates consistently on there, running security patches consistently, um, maintaining an updated antivirus on there. All those things are things that we can guarantee we're doing for company computers. But if somebody's working on a computer that you know we've never touched, it's just their home computer, or it's their kid's college computer or something like that, um, it's not inherently gonna be as secure as something that's been maintained by the company. So that's one big thing is making sure that, you know, all your programs are up to date, all your security patches are installed and up to date, that you've got antivirus running on there. Um, and then also being um, cognizant of what Wi-Fi network you're connecting to. So you should always, you know, use a private Wi-Fi network. And you, if you're connecting into a server, you should always be using a virtual private network, a VPN connection for that. Um, so, you know, things like log me in and, you know, these other remote programs are just inherently less secure than, than having an actual VPN set up to your network using your firewall um, that you've got on site there. So, uh, but I think a lot of people are probably in the boat where they're using the cloud. They're relying on tools like Office 365 um, to check their email or maybe they have things in SharePoint and OneDrive, things like that. So um, the biggest thing is just making sure that your computer or whatever device you're using to access that stuff is secured. 
um, running the latest versions of programs and also encrypted too, because if you're, you know, you happen to leave this computer in your car or something and it gets stolen, you don't want somebody else to have access to those potentially sensitive company files. So basically in a nutshell, if all the things you just mentioned, VPN, you know, cloud, if people like, I don't know what that is, they probably should be talking to them. Yeah, either talk to me or if you have, you know, an internal IT contact, reach out to them because they should be the ones kind of walking you through this. That's what we've been doing with all of our clients over the last couple of weeks is people have been calling us saying, hey, I've never done this before. I've always, you know, gone in and worked from the office. I've never had to access this stuff from home before. So now we're helping them do that. And, and hopefully, you know, if somebody out there is listening to this and they're running into similar issues, hopefully they have somebody who is there for them and can, and can walk them through a process like this. So one of the other challenges, Jay, is a lot of us are trying to do, you know, client meetings using Zoom or, and any other programs. Is there anything people should think about before they, you know, just hook up and, you know, start using Zoom or any other products? Any type of security concerns with video chatting? Yeah, so, you know, it, it's sad to say, but right now there's a huge uptick in cybercrime because people take advantage of a situation like this, where they know people are gonna be working from home using softwares that they may have never used before. Um, so one thing that we're actually seeing clients, but just in the industry in general, um, people are starting to send like phony Zoom requests to people. So they send you an invite through your email that looks like a Zoom chat, but it's actually a virus and you double click that and download a virus on your computer. So making wow. sure that you trust the sender, making sure that it's coming from a legitimate email address and not some weird, bizarre email that, you know, looks like the sender's name, but it's got a different domain name after it. You know, just doing that same due diligence that you typically do with emails before you click on any sort of weird links or attachments, maybe take it up a notch and be extra, extra careful on that and make sure that your team is trained up on um, what to look for in those phishing attempts because we are seeing an uptick of that um, just industry-wide. That's something that um, people are, you know, taking advantage of the situation to, you know, do cyber crimes. So it's, it's not uh, good, but it, it's, it's kind of the nature of the world that we live in. Yeah. Well, like you said, when you look at it, especially now, everyone's inviting you to do a Zoom call. So I look quickly, yeah, Jay Small, huh? Jay must want to talk about something. I click it and then unfortunately I've been, you know, caught and stuff. So Jay, how can people learn more? How can they reach out to you if they need help? Yeah, absolutely. So you can uh, check us out online at cinchit.com. That's C-I-N-C-H-I-T.com. Uh, you can send me over an email. My email address is the letter J, my last name small, at cinchit.com. So that's J small at cinchit.com. You can find me on LinkedIn uh, under J small, or um, you, know, you can follow the avenues through our website and, and get a hold of me that way. So find us on social, find us online. Um, we're, we're there for you. Awesome. Jay, really appreciate you taking a few minutes to call out to the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Thank you, Kevin. It's been a pleasure.